You took me my boss. <laughs> Start talking about what they believe. 
and problems. Whenever you sit down with a sister and she begins to talk about you not being saved if you don't speak in another language, you got a problem. All right. Whenever you talk to a brother and the only thing he can talk about is how long your hair is or what you do and don't do, you got a problem. Whenever you talk to church folks and the only thing that they can talk about is you not singing hymns in the church as opposed to what they call now Christian contemporary music, you got a problem. My brothers and sisters, when good old church folk meet at the coffee shop and the restaurant to talk about how short Sister Susan dress is, you got a problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the church, Jesus had to deal with religious folk that wanted to keep the people in bondage to their dogmas and doctrines. Right. When you read chapter 8 and you read why he makes a statement such as he did concerning freedom, you're going to read that the position of the elders related to their religious dogma. That's right. They were proposing that because they were a certain seed, the seed of Abraham, that they should have been favored over all other folks. Mm. And Jesus had to explain to them, hold up. I know you may be in the house. But you're not the whole piece of the house. All right. I mean, All right. Amen. Lot of church folk are in the house. That's right. But you're not the whole house. All right. Whenever you lock folk out the house, you got a problem. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We find that part of the problem within the church today is that we have turned into religious zealots. We have become people that hold on to our doctrines and our dogmas more than loving service to people. That's right. That's right. Why is the church going through a transition where young people are not attracted to ministry anymore. It's because we have placed doctrines and 
and, and, and Janet, she, she said, well, she'll see me and we'll have visitors and come over to the house. We'll have young men that come work. And I make a point to hire black young men that are doing business. Yes. She'll tell you that we've had many, many business owners that come and the majority of them have been African American and they've been young. Just started out in business, doing business. I'm very grateful to have owned two or three businesses and, and a nonprofit organization. So when they come, I have opportunities to talk to them and just discuss life with them. You know, and, 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 and they, they reach out to me, they feel like this is a homeboy. You know, especially when I tell them, you know, I came out of the projects of Montgomery and they can look at, you know, they look at things, but I'm looking deep within their souls and I can see where they're hurting. I can see that there was no father there. I can see by the way they dress that there was an absentee parent there. I can see that by the way they, they talk that they did not receive the best education and they did not have the best teachers when they were in school that focused on helping David or Johnny. So I take occasion to sit them down at the table and we'll be there and have a dialogue with them and I'll start discussing things with them and, and, and we'll get to this is what you need to do to advance your business. You need to get a shirt with your business name on it. You need to tuck your shirt into your pants and put a belt on so when you go to customers' homes, you look presentable. You need to have a script that you practice daily of how to introduce yourself when a customer comes to the front door. Good morning, Mr. Jones. This is Brian from Delta's Lawn Service. I just wanted to stop by, check on you, got your message. We're going to be taking care of you. Can you show to be done. We have those conversations. And when they leave, they are transformed. They are amazed. And they ask me, brother, can we call you sometimes? And she'll tell me, I'm the father to everybody that comes to our house. I tell them, look, you got my number? Call me, text me. And you know what I find amazing? They'll call me once a week. And they'll start calling me Mr. Brian. They'll start calling me Pops or Dad. <laughs> and then I just wanted to check on them. I just wanted to talk to you about something. But when we can get back to what Jesus said the church should be, and that is all things to all people, and stop focusing on doctrines and dogmas, and talk about My brothers and sisters, we can move the church needle from empty to full. I failed to give you a topic, and that was purpose. But if I had to go back and retract what the topic in discussion is, it is choosing to be free right. over abiding with a thief. Mm. We're going to get to that, y'all. Y'all hang in there with me. Right. I'm on a time schedule here. <laughs> so when you put your dogma and doctrines on people, my brothers and sisters, you place them in bondage. Bondage of what you do and don't do. You place that on them. Killing their progression and growth of what they could be or what they could become. Come on now. Yeah. Let me say that again. When you place your doctrines and dogmas on people, you kill them. You put them in bondage. You stop their progression. He was dealing with a bunch of religious fools. 
You know, you can tell Sister Jones she's going to pray for you, but as soon as she hangs out the phone, you think Sister Jones is really praying? And she's cursing you. Oh, I wish that, that, I just wish she could just go somewhere and die. I wish she wouldn't call me no more. But you think Sister Jones is your friend. You know, it's hard to recognize a thief because a thief has to get close to you in order to be a thief. See, we think a thief would be easily recognizable if that was the case. Jesus would not have said the thief cometh to steal. See, nobody can take anything from you unless they get close enough to you to take what you got. Yeah. All right. All right. I don't hear what I'm saying. Yes, a thief has to be in the same vicinity. A thief has to rub shoulders with you. A thief has to gain your trust. You have to like a thief. You have to believe in a thief in order for a thief to take something from you. We need to finish up. But he says, a thief coming but to steal. What are some other things that a thief would do? A thief will lie down with you, get up and make you righteous <laughs> while planning to leave. <laughs> what else will a thief do, Brian? A thief will say, I love you until you are convinced that there is no one else in the world like them and that you mean the world to them. No. <laughs> a thief will say, I love you until you really think they love you. How can you think they love you? I know a monk's dignitaries. I know some of us have never laid down with nobody that we thought loved us. <laughs> just to find out that they love somebody else and just wanted what I had. But a thief will do that. My brothers and sisters, you have to understand that a thief doesn't care anything about your well-being. They just want to get close enough to you. So watch this. So that when they take from you, you don't even realize what they took is done. Well. <laughs> Everybody ever had anything taken from you and you don't realize it's gone until years later it's gone. Some of you didn't realize that your husband or your wife was a thief until your jaw was gone. Some of you didn't realize that your family were thieves until every time they come around you, your peace would leave. in 
stealing from you, then the thief moves to phase two of their plan, which is to kill you. Everybody say, kill. Mm, kill. kill. <laughs> when the thief has taken what's yours, the only way that the thief can kill you is by preventing from preventing you from ever regaining what he or she stole from you. Let me say that again. The process of killing you, here it is a crime. Watch this. The thief not allowing you to regain what they took from you. Now the thief moves again in stealth like a spirit to make sure that in the process of killing you, you die. How does the thief accomplish that? They take the very thing that they stole from you and they use it against you. My Lord. <laughs> Let me say that again. How does a thief heal your spirit, heal your joy, make sure that it never returns? They take the same thing that they stole from you and they use it against you. They will use the joy every time they see you. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. And that same joy that you used to possess now has become anger. <laughs> but they're striving all the way to the back. That's right. Yes. They talk about how good it is with your form of love. <laughs> they drive in your form of power. <laughs> oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? They live in your house. That's right. That used to be at one time. A thief, my brothers and sisters, is someone that seeks to always portray and display the items that they stole from you. They want to flaunt it in your presence. Whenever you around good old church folk, is the only thing they can talk about is how. to stop the 
yourself get big signs. <laughs> Come on, give God a hand. 